The SAT is definitely going to give you at least one question where you have the number of solutions and it involves some sort of exponential equation, or in this case, an x squared equation. And so I have a lesson on this and how to deal with that. And sometimes we need things like the discriminant. Other times we're better off going to Desmos. But this is about as short as those kinds of questions can be because it's not really about any of those like algebra solutions. It's much more conceptual than that. Just think about it. x squared equaling negative 841. Well, that's impossible because if you square something, it always will end up with a positive result, right? If you square a positive number, so a positive number squared is a positive, but a negative number squared is also a positive. So this negative is impossible. And we're supposed to know that and just instantly pick zero, which is the answer here. So for some of you who understand those kinds of, I don't know, like big picture algebra ideas, this is literally a five second question, right? As long as it takes you to read the equation and, and that's basically it. Um, for some of you though, this, this at least feels maybe scarier because you, you got a big number. We, we've seen other versions of this question, like I said, that, that involve more elaborate steps like the discriminant. So maybe you're expecting it to be like that. And we are starting to get to the part of even the first module here where there might be tricks and traps. And so it's not so bad if you're on guard and worried that maybe that's too easy. You know, I honestly think that's a good thing to feel at a point like this. Um, but there are things we can do to reassure ourselves. Uh, if you really want to go to Desmos, you could. The problem with this is you got to know what you're kind of working with and how to interpret it, right? So if we do what we do in other places with Desmos and just put the equation in as is, right? So here's x squared. But if we make it equal to negative uh, 841, we're not going to see anything. And I can zoom out and I'm not going to see anything. And we can zoom out until we get to the 800s. And here's the 1,000, right? And I'm still not seeing anything. And so how far do you have to go before you're convinced that there are no solutions, right? Th that's basically kind of the problem with this is Desmos isn't going to show you anything because there is nothing to show. What this is trying to do is give us those familiar straight vertical lines to give us the values of x that would make this equation true. But since there are no values of x that make this true, we're never going to see those straight vertical lines. So at a certain point, you just have to trust that, whereas in other cases, we might not see the lines at first, but when we zoom out, we might see them and then there are solutions. And so it, it, that's always a challenge with these questions of reducing Desmos is it's hard to confirm because maybe you just didn't zoom out enough, right? But I, I feel like here at 2000 on the x-axis, you know, like we're, we're probably good. Um, but, you know, it is a way maybe to confirm what you already thought rather than the only way you do it. Another thing you could do, though, to make this a little bit more, you know, certain is uh, you could split these two equations up, right? This is one equation, but you can split it. And I usually don't recommend that because usually I'm just like, well, just keep it as one thing and get those vertical lines. But when we're asked for the number of vertical lines, it maybe makes sense to think of it as two separate things. So we're going to go back to a regular x squared. And you can see when I zoom in, it, it looks like a parabola, right? So there you go. Then if we do, uh, you can probably do it without the y, but I'm going to put it there anyway. y equals negative 841. Now when we talk about solutions, we're talking about intersections, right? Because we've split these two equations. So now we're thinking, okay, where do they cross, right? If, well, I see the purple. I don't see the black, right? So let's, we could zoom out. And again, how far do you zoom before you conclude that there are no intersections? Well, in this case, you're going to have to zoom all the way to negative 841. And it's right down there, you see? And so at this point, you would have proof that there are zero intersections because we know how a parabola behaves, right? That one is opening upwards. So the purple is going to go all the way up forever. It's never going to turn around and come back down, but we can see our black line at the bottom of the screen there. That is negative 841 straight horizontal line forever. So it's never going to turn back and cross. So now we have much more uh, visual proof that it's there's no solutions, right? So I do like using Desmos for a lot of these number of solutions questions when it is an x squared, when we have a parabola involved in some way, uh, but you just need to know how to do it. So if you haven't seen my lesson on that, I highly recommend it. There's a lot of complexity there, but if you can get those things down, it's really great because this is a very consistent topic that the SAT asks about. There's a, a wide variety of ways they can ask about it, but you are almost guaranteed to see at least one of these for every SAT and they generally are harder questions. So if you can lock this topic down, you're guaranteeing yourself 10 points that a lot of other people won't be able to get.